Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of The Probe. Tonight, I have questions, so many of them. I seek answers to why an explosion has killed a farmer, for instance. Is it not painful that suddenly, in the split of a second, hundreds of homes, in fact, over 500 homes, have been razed to the ground, and scores of people have lost nearly everything they owned to a fire that ravaged their community? How did we get here? What really must have caused this incident? Was someone or institution negligent? How do we soothe the pain of the affected and rebuild the village called Apietzi, now left in total ruins? Could the number of deaths have been less if residents were not in a hurry to satisfy their insatiable hunger or quest to become citizen journalists instead of being security conscious? There are many more questions than answers. Here are mine, so do send yours as well. Uh, to the probe and let's probe the fundamental issues of our disaster preparedness as a people. Director General of Police Public Affairs, Kwesi Fori, will be with me here in the studio. Saji Saji Amadonu, Deputy Coordinator Natmo, is also my guest and senior member of the security desk, Maswa Agwagwa, joins us live from the ground. Zero is the APT. This is the probe with me, MFA Apau, live on Joy News. We are on myjoyonline.com, love 99.5 FM, DSTV 421, Go TV 144. We are on YouTube and also on Facebook. Stay with us here on the probe. But behind me, I'm sure you can see uh, this document by an Earth Observation Report by the Geospatial Unit of NADMO. And it's dated this year, 21 one 2022 and uh, it talks about a piety chrome explosive blast that particular incident and this is an official report uh, from nadmo on this so this is the location of, of a piety chrome in the prisia honey valley district of the western region along the bogosu bordier highway this is where this incident has occurred that we are talking about now now take a look at it N let me just uh, scroll down a piety chrome before this particular blast on Thursday. This is how the town looks like. And this is a Google Street View uh, document that we've seen there. This is how the town looked like before this particular blast that we recorded on Thursday. This is more of the town. It's still the Google Street View of a Piotr Chrome, how it looked like before this particular blast. We still have more pictures of that particular town. And this town is between uh, Bogoso and Bordier. Now, the structural impact of this uh, blast has happened on Thursday. This circles you see is that particular stretch, how far the blast went. So the impact was similar to that of a van, to a small size car vehicle bomb. That's how big it was. So the satellite imagery acquired on the 21st, 2022, that's this year, that's January, suggests approximately 140 buildings collapsed within a 150 meter shockwave radius. Now, the part of the released energy impacting the ground formed a crater, which we've seen in terms of the videos that we've brought you so far, and has also generated a ground shockwave similar to a high intensity short duration earthquake. So that's what was recorded that day. Now, this is the town after that particular incident raced down. No building in sight. You've seen the before and the after picture. So this is after. This is how the town now looks like. And we are live on the ground tonight. And my colleague, Max Olagwagba, has been reporting. And the latest, he's also been interacting with that motorbike rider that we are told must have caused that incident. He's distancing himself from that particular narrative that has been put out there. That and more on tonight's edition of the probe with me, MFA Apau. Stay with us, we start probing shortly after the break.
welcome back to the probe here on the Joy News channel. We are also on myjoyonline.com. We are on YouTube, we are on Facebook, and you can send your questions in ahead. Um, shortly, we'll also be going live uh, to appear to join my colleague Maxo Agbagba. Uh, we're also expecting the Director General of Police Public Affairs, Kwesi Fori, to join us. But in the studios with me now is the Deputy Director General of NATMO, Seji Saji Amedonu. Welcome to the probe. Thank you. Emma. Good to see you once again. Yeah. Uh, another disaster has hit wow. us, so we have to sit with you again. Yeah, unfortunately. And unfortunately. So tonight, um, I don't know what the update is in terms of, I know there are investigations underway. We'll touch on that briefly. But in terms of rescue operations, a number of people injured, those unfortunately have passed amongst others. What's the update that we have? Thank you. And uh, good evening to your viewers too. Um, currently, as we speak, uh, rescue operations ended that very day in the evening. Okay. And uh, we were able to put actual numbers to uh, the activities that were carried out. Uh, I'm sure you have noticed that uh, earlier on the report was talking about 17 deaths. Mm -hmm. but actually, at the close of um, day on that Thursday, we had recorded 13, 13. 13 deaths. And uh, we have about we had about 155 injuries, but 45 of them were quite critical. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them were actually sent to uh, Konfanochi in Kumasi. Okay. Yes, and um, we have, the total number of people affected is about 954 per our records, the data okay. we gathered after our initial assessment. We have um, a male adult population of 225 affected, a female adult population of 280 affected. We have male children, about 180 of them. We have female children, 211. And we have uh, the critically injured, uh, 45 out of the 155. The rest had minor injuries. They were treated and uh, they are with the people at the safe haven at the, um, the hotel. The hotel ha is housing the males the male victims and uh, the, the St. Michael Roman Catholic Paris is housing the children and the, 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 their mothers and all the other females. Okay, well, mm. the, the issue about the number of deaths recorded, 13, thankfully, uh, it remains at 13, but the concern is also that the, num the videos, for instance, that uh, we saw, and then also uh, the second blast or the third blast or so that we saw people going close to, yeah. is it the case that we may have lost more, but we cannot account for them? No, as we speak, you know, Immediately the incident uh, happened, um, they were able to set up an incident command, mm -hmm. a center where you had all the agencies that help in, in um, any disaster situation. The police, the fire service, not more, and headed by the district chief executive, in this case a municipal chief executive, and that is the disaster management committee. So they got to work immediately. Mm -hmm. And the town is not too large a town, okay. anyway. So they were able to cover almost every part of the town. Now, you know we have 45 which are critical and in critical conditions. Well, the reports as we, 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 we have as of now is that they are responding uh, favorably. So we just hope that the number 13 will not increase. But there are some people in critical conditions, even today, they had to move, with the help of the Air Force and so on, had to move people from one of the hospitals to another bigger hospital mm. today. We're told about an 11-year-old boy, for instance, who was also had to be airlifted amongst exactly. others. What's his situation? Exactly. I have not gotten that, okay. immediate, in that immediately now, but okay. I, 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 I was given the report later this afternoon mm -hmm. about the airlifting of, there were two, the 11-year-old and another person who were airlifted. Okay. Now, rebuilding uh, the town, you know the president had charged your outfit, for instance, uh, to work fast enough uh, to get the people uh, to return to normalcy, at least. They should return uh, to their normal life as a town. Uh, what's the plan in place for that? Has that started? Have we started re rebuilding Apeti? Yes, um, there are some temporary measures that are being rolled out now. As we speak, um, the, the whole assembly 
including the NADMO staff, the police, all of them, they are engaging, getting a place ready mm -hmm. to move everybody there by tomorrow. Uh, thankfully, we have some donations coming in for tents and other items, apart from the initial uh, items that we sent as an organization. Uh, the Red Cross has come in with some tents. Uh, Bullfield has also come in with some tents. And the uh, Regional Coordinating Council of the Western Region has also come in with some tents. Those tents are being erected. And at the same time, they are working on uh, uh, washroom facilities, temporary washroom facilities. So by close of day, they are hoping that by close of day, the place will be ready so that tomorrow they could move the people. And this time, they might be in smaller units because at the St. Michael's uh, Church, mm -hmm. you know, they are in a big hall. Everybody cramped together and you know the challenges that also poses. But this time, some of them hold up to 10 people, 8 people, so that this time they can be able to start, I mean, uh, doing things the way they were doing before the incident happened, like cooking and other things. But as we speak, you know that uh, it's the assembly that is preparing food for everyone. Mm -hmm. But this time, when they go into the smaller units, then they can start uh, uh, regaining or life becoming normal again after the incident. So that's, that's what's happening. At do, do we have any timelines? You've mentioned that at least by close of week, for instance, you have any specific days that, because they're all watching you right now and they need some assurances in terms of when exactly? No, the movement will be done tomorrow. Yeah, the, the confirmation I got from the, the chief executive and uh, our non staff on the ground is that they want to try as much as possible to move the people tomorrow. That's why they, were, they are still working as we speak. Okay. Well, the concern is that as a country, we are never prepared. At least you, we can't say that anybody is actually adequately prepared for any form of disaster. But it is also our ability to deal uh, with such situations when we are faced with it. It appears that it's woefully inadequate when it comes to uh, our preparedness for such disasters. Well, um, yes, to some extent, uh, you will never be able to fully prepare for a disaster because the word disaster mm -hmm. itself is an occurrence yeah. that does not give you any uh, warning. warning before it occurs. But as an organization, I mean, part of preparedness is information sharing. It's about education. It's about people knowing the hazards. It's about people following protocols. It's about people obeying bylaws. These are all part of preparation. It's not just any specific activity. but if we live in a certain locality, there will be laws regulating the life there. Example, not building on waterways. These are places where people should have it. This is where the, that kind of mm -hmm. uh, an arrangement. As a people, our responsibility is that we make sure we abide by those because those laws were fashioned out of uh, or with the mind of making sure that things, the society functions very well. So yes, preparation, to some extent, we have a functional uh, a national disaster management organization. Mm -hmm. As soon as the incident happened, you saw the activities that were carried out. At least some kind of readiness or preparations has been done. We know our disaster profile for the country. We know that at this particular time, the disasters we deal with are more of fires. Okay. Because, I mean, the you know, the Hamatan, and uh, a lot of farmers do their burning this time, I mean, to start the new crop season and all that. So we know we deal with fires at this time. So already, our staffs were already in the communities educating people about the right way of doing bush burning, the do's and, and, and the don'ts and all that. Okay. So to some extent, yes. Um, an incident like this, I mean, it took the whole country by, by surprise. I mm. mean, it just happened. And uh, fortunately, uh, as a country, we had some arrangement to be able to contain the situation uh, when it started. And I mean, we have done our best as a country to be able to manage the situation up to this point. We could have done better, mm. but uh, under the circumstance, this is what we have been able to do. To so what extent are you receiving individual institutions and other support? 
in terms of relief uh, for these people? Yes, quite, quite a lot of support. Uh, uh, we are getting quite a lot of support. Uh, as we speak uh, today, even Ghana Gas uh, visited the, the, the scene and went on to visit the victims too as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, they presented uh, a cash amount of two million uh, Ghana cities. Um, Goldfields had also done some donation earlier, and some other organizations are coming in to, to do quite uh, some donation to support the people, yes. Okay, well, there are questions that um, are coming in. I will get to it, but quickly, before I go to my colleague, Max Olapapa, uh, we are getting some residents complaining of missing relatives, amongst others. So the concern is, are we setting that 13 is actually the death toll and have they checked thoroughly through the rubble to make sure there are no more bodies what is the status of the investigations that final bit will shelf for now uh, the status of investigations will shelf for now and delve into it pretty much later but these are the concerns that they are raising have we thoroughly checked before we called off the search or the rescue operation no well it is not completely uh, over because uh, uh, what that does is to take detailed information of everybody that, is, that have been affected by this. And in doing that, we will get to know whether uh, some people are missing or not, because that report will be, will be coming to us. But as I speak, we have not had that report yet. But the, what we have is that immediately after the incident, whilst they were identifying a place to move the people to, some of the survivors, actually a few of them, actually move to relatives in the adjoining town. Okay. An example is Bogoso. They are trying to, our staff is trying to collate a list of those who have moved to stay with their, their relatives so that we can do a comparison of those at the, the, the safe haven and, and see if there's uh, somebody missing, we can find a way of accounting for that person. Okay, so the search, you would say, is not entirely it's not completely, it's over. It's not completely ended because, you see, as we speak, the actual count for the households, when you were having your intro, mm -hmm. you saw that uh, when we took the satellite imagery of the place, the number of houses captured by the searcher is, is about 140 plus. But we have not done the actual count. Normally, that will also be done on the ground to look at uh, what other installations have been affected, what institution, because for now, we know that a school, only one school has been affected, two churches has been affected. Maybe there are other uh, social or other institutions or other things that have not come to that. But when they do the actual count on the ground, they might be able to get some other information and find some other things. Okay, I know that various institutions are doing uh, different investigations yes, of this particular incident. Yes. I know NADMO, uh, together with the police and some other institutions, are also working hand in hand. I don't know if NADMO is doing a separate investigation. What exactly is the status of the different investigations that are being conducted by the various institutions on this matter? Well, but, but where we come in as an organization is when there are humanitarian issues. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The main um, actors in this matter is uh, the Ministry of Land, Ministry of Interior, where we also fall. And you know there's already a committee set up to start investigations. And I'm sure you heard of uh, the interdiction of one uh, just to make sure the investigation goes on as, as planned. So that is going on. For us as an organization, we are still having to deal with the humanitarian issues that have happened taking care of the people that we have at the safe haven, trying to make sure that they regain their, their way of life to some extent in the shortest possible time. Okay. Immediately, that's what we are concerned about. Yes, the investigation, as it goes on, the report of it will be of interest to us to see how we can improve on the way we do things as an organization. Okay. Well, I would, would definitely return to uh, the issue about investigations amongst others. But let's go live uh, to Ground Zero now. And my colleague Maxo Agbagba um, is with us. He's been there since uh, Thursday when the incident occurred and has joined us live um, on the ground. Maxwell, first off, uh, there's this uh, clarification that I need in terms of 
uh, the name of the town, the pronunciation, and of course, the spelling uh, of that particular town. Since you've been interacting with them, you've been there uh, for some time now. What are you gathering exactly when it comes to the name of this particular town? Yeah. So I've been um, finding out from the people and asking them, asking them what they make of the, you know, confusion and surrounding the spelling of the name and its pronunciation itself. I've been engaging some uh, opinion leaders in this community and um, I met a man who told me that he he was part of the first people who settled um, there in that community. And he was explaining to me um, that the spelling is A-P-P-I-A-T-S-E. But uh, contrary to what he told me, um, I noticed a signpost that we saw in the community itself and uh, spells it as A P E A T S E. Another signpost we saw about um, some minutes' drive away from the community itself gives it the spelling A P P I A T S E. And um, that is what all the people here um, told me should be the spelling for um, APT. And the MC is also here. I'm sure you've also noticed the confusion surrounding the spelling of the name of. Yes, yes, the yes. I also have about two versions of of the spellings, I mean, but you know, some of these things, sometimes it comes from the names. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, and then probably some understanding. So I'm sure the word appear, you know, mm -hmm. I connected to uh, some people, mm -hmm. um, so the pair person who settled there, yeah. and appear T is just like, a, a, maybe appear is staying here or something like that. So okay. uh, that should be, you know, Ghanaians are, some of the names are actually, some of the towns are named about after the, uh, let's say the people, the first person probably who settled the, the village. Okay. okay, so if you listen on radio, we have here with us um, Eric Dasamani. Isaac Dasmani. Isaac Dasmani. Dasmani. Uh, Dasmani. Yes. That's how you pronounce it. Yes, okay. Dasmani. So we, we're learning the pronunciation of Dasmani. It's D A S M A N I. Okay, great. He's the Municipal Chief Executive for Christia Huni Valley. Um, we want to zoom into the conversation and find out. Um, just some minutes ago, we saw people moving some of the canopies here to another place. We told that um, for the people who live here, you are taking them to a new place, a new spacious place, new accommodation will be provided for them. Now. Can you provide us with details? Yes, uh, since the incident happened, you know, we're having a place, we're searching for a place that and temporarily to keep them here. And then we approach the, the parish priest and then he allow us to host everything here. Mm. But you can see that they are all around here. The place is too small yes. for them. And then, you know, it's in the middle of Bogoso. Yeah. And uh, it's also a place, uh, uh, in terms of planning purposes, it's not helping us a lot. Okay. Yes, because if you look at the crowd, they are moving in and out, people coming here. So we are not able to identify actually the, the, the actual victims. It's when you come around, even though they know themselves, but if any stranger comes here, you see a lot of people around. So I think uh, we, we, we sat down with a lot of people, the FGR, they gave us a very nice facility with two big halls, and then the small room that we can use as a clinic. And then we decided to also add that some of the tents. So, so far, Goldfields brought us, uh, uh, they brought us 15, the big tent. And that one takes about 12 people per each tent. So, and then Grand Red Cross too also brought us about 25 of them, yeah. and which they can also host about 120, between 120 to 150 people. Mm -hmm. So if we add those ones to the, the facility, we should be able to I mean, accommodate all of them there. And then we'll create the environment for them because we have received a lot of relief items. And we can't share them because of where they are now. Okay. So yes, yeah, so once we move them to that place, we can provide them with all the necessary my, uh, what do you call the magic that the utensils that they can use to cook themselves. We can distribute the food to them. We can find out. Uh, we can also let them attend clinics so that we can take proper care of them. That is my main mission. So since yesterday and today we have been working just close from the site, and then we are going to continue tomorrow. So hopefully by close of tomorrow we will finish preparing the site, and by Tuesday morning or in the evening we move them to the site because we are creating the washrooms and then a place of convenience and all of that. There's already the ball holes that have been drilled there. So I'm also going to buy a poly tank, about two or three of them and supply them with enough water. And then I mean create some center for them where we can fit some TV there for them to 
I mean, we are planning properly. Yeah. I mean, because when we send them there, probably it might take some time because I mean, to do the planning phase. So we need to get a place that they may feel comfortable. Unfortunately, the place is just about 100 meters away. I mean, from their farming areas, so okay. they can easily go to their farms and then and then then come back and stay there. Mm. So they're mainly farmers. Yeah, most of them are farmers. Most of them are farmers. Most of them are farmers. We have seen drone footages of the extent of devastation, um, but you have been to the ground. Um, is it the entire community that is gone? Yeah, if you look at the the, the center where the, those things happen, especially very close to the road, almost all their buildings. So you know, they are attached houses, and that actually saved a lot of lives. You know, because of the attached houses and the, the smart houses, and then when the impact happened, some of them it collapsed on them. But they were able to, I mean, come out from the, the debris. Yeah, so yes, and then because not concrete rubbles and then that. But when you go beyond about one, uh, 150 meters, you can see a very, I mean, nice buildings. And those ones, the, the impact, of, as I said, it ripped off the what they call the roofs. So those ones, we we are thinking about probably if they start the reconstruction, we will see whether we can we are we able to provide some iron sheet for them so that they, those people can go back and stay there. Whilst the epicenter, those areas that are very close to the, the, the road, will be able to I mean, do something for them. Okay, okay. Another thing that, another question that a lot of people are asking is about the narrations out there. And um, you had you said the municipal security council. So we just want to find out from you. Early in the day, I engaged the rider, the motorbike rider, and he was telling me that contrary to narrations out there that he collided with the vehicle transporting the explosives, he said that did not happen. At the time the explosion happened, he was at the hospital. So the questions that are coming up is that, so really it wasn't an accident from the earlier narration that uh, we got. So probably the motorbike was maybe on the road and then the incident happened. The no, but uh, I mean, some of these things, I mean, we, are, we all live in this area and we understand the terrain very, uh, very well. Yes, uh, according to uh, the eyewitness, I mean, some of these things I didn't initially want to go there. I was just thinking about the people, okay. you understand? But my investigation and all the, the few people that I consulted or I talked to, it actually the motor rider, I mean, actually collided with the, like it went into the truck. And then, then he, like, he himself, but the motor went under the track and he dragged the motor for mm. some time. Yeah. And then motor caught fire. Yeah. Yeah, under the, the, the what do you call, the, the tank. Yeah. So what happened, the driver got down mm. and then he was shouting that people should run, people should run, people should run. Yeah. You understand? So those who actually listened to him, they started running. Yeah. And some people also picked their phones and then because it started burning. Yeah. According to them, I mean, it went off for some time before the blast. All oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah, so it was the blast that actually, yeah. I mean... So, yeah, so following that chronology, what it means is that the motorbike rider himself was not there when the incident happened. Yes, yes, so the motorbike yes. was maybe on the road, sure. perhaps on the road. Yes. So the question that is coming up is that, so if the motorbike was on the road, and if we had an escort leading the explosive team, then he possibly should have seen the motorbike on the road. I think, uh, since uh, my brother, those meeting. things, you know, let's leave it to the law enforcement agencies to do the investigation. I don't want us to preempt whatever happened there, all right? Because there are people who are, I mean, who, they have also seen the driver. They have investigated. They are, they are, they are taking uh, what we call it, their statement and all of that. So I think let's leave it to the law enforcement agencies to do their work. Okay. But you, you talked about reconstruction. Um, are we looking at reconstructing the entire village? Yes, because now the entire village is uh, almost gone. Okay. Yeah, so now the planning stage. So what I'm doing right now, that maybe tomorrow I'll be having a music meeting, okay. expanded music, where we are going to include the clergy, the, some of the pastors in town, the committee members, the assemblyman for the area, and then the rep from the town, about three of them, and then yeah, I mean, we inaugurate a committee that will foresee some of this in the welfare of the people. And at the same time, also listen at the planning phase. Yes, because we have received some a lot of relief items. 
as you rightly mentioned, uh, uh, the CEO of Ghana Gas was here. He gave us two million Ghana cities. Vice President came, two hundred thousand Ghana cities. The other organization came, some people ten thousand, and uh, so tomorrow when we meet, we are going to open an account okay. and then put all the monies in there, and then we use the money to take care of the people. Right, that is why that's the main aim that I want to take them out from here. Once they are from here, you move them out from here, and then they are in the camp where we can have full control. Then we know when we are giving them some stipend, and then so that they can go about their activity. We should also be mindful that some of them are students, they are school children. How are they going to come into school? So, in terms of planning process, I'm considering all these things and then look at some of the nearest schools that we can enroll all the school children so that we can get some bus to pick them. To school. I mean, it's, it's a new comprehensive thing that I've put on paper that we are going to implement. So I need to get people, I need to carry the community along with me so that at least they may also understand what I'm doing uh, just to help them to also at least come back to their normal life. Mm. Uh, let me admit, I'm quite impressed with the efforts at bringing relief to the people and the coordination you know, that is going on here. Um, I want to find out. So, if we want to reconstruct the community, what are we looking at bringing? You know, maybe some new additions, social amenities, and all of that. And what role is the mining company that was supposed to take? The yeah, uh, of the exclusive. What yeah, role are they playing? Is it already the yeah, Chamber of Mines? Okay. Uh, their, their, their CEO was here yesterday. He also donated some uh, what they call some material, building material items okay. worth about fifty thousand dollars. I mean, there are so many pledges from other organizations, and uh, you know, Go First Scheme, uh, FGR, they even help us in diversion of the main road to uh, allow vehicular movement. And then there's some other organizations, and then uh, Precious Mines, they have all come in and they all pledge their support. I mean, the rural bank, Fiasmai Rural Bank, is now even providing lunch for all the victims. And then, so we have a lot of, we have received a lot of support from the community and from the, all the, the, the players within the industry. Mm -hmm. So for now, uh, well, even the, 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 the company that actually caused the mess, I have not even seen them. Yes, yes. I mean, my concentration now is possibly to, to, to look at the situation and try to resolve the situation, the problem. Then the rest, I mean, I'll leave it to the law enforcement, the actors in the, that industry. Of course, because there are some people who control the activities within there. monitoring and then see the progress. Okay. Okay. So before we go back to the studio, earlier you were telling us about um, the figures, the death toll. It has gone up by one. One person has died. Any idea when this person died? Yes, yes, yes. I mean I'm keeping her very much close about all the the, the people who injured. Yeah. And then there are those who also reported. You know, initially there was a report that a lot of people yes, when we got there you could see a lot of people lying down, you know, because of the blast. You know, some got unconscious and all of that. So when we sent some of them to the hospital, a lot of them were able to come back to life. Maybe because of the impact, you know, they, they had some shocks and other things. That, I mean, so after, by the close of uh, the, the, the Thursday, we, we, I mean, the figure that I got has not changed that much. Yes, it's the figure that those who have reported after the incidents, that has actually gone up. Yeah. Yes, because now we have about 256 people reporting to the hospital. Okay. Yeah, because of minor injuries and some too, because of the sound, it has affected their ears and all those things. Mm. So yeah, so today we need to, we had to bring in some urologists to, to also look at them. I had that complaint and some people too also brought their hospital bill to me. I mean, they went on their own, right? Yeah. Yes, so we are still, that is why we have put the camp, uh, the, 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 we have put the, uh, the nurses and then other here so that they come around. They come around to, they come around to to, to, to take care of them, right? Yeah. So if you if you if you look at the whole process, I mean, so we can say that for now, there I mean, there about 14 people, I mean, who are dead, okay. and then the 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 about five are in critical condition now, one uh, three in Kumasi, one in uh, Kolebu. And then there's one to that this evening. I've got information that we need to refer him tomorrow to uh, Cape Coast. Okay. okay, sure. So we'll, we'll be stopping here. We'll be crossing over to the studio, but we'll definitely come back um, you know, to ask more questions. So, MF5, over to you in the studio. Um, we'll come back and then we'll still 
continue. We'll continue the conversation. We're from here, the St. Michael's Catholic Church. But, but just before I let you off, Maxwell, um, you've been interacting with some uh, survivors also on how they've been sleeping. Uh, what's their status? What can you talk about? Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll come back later uh, to Maxwell uh, for some survivor stories as well on how uh, they're hoping to rebuild amongst others. But as it stands now, one more person, unfortunately, uh, has passed, uh, bringing the number, the death toll, to 14. And he talks about five persons uh, in a critical condition. Yeah. That was one of the persons who was uh, airlifted, mm. uh, I think, to Kolibu. And uh, I think he said the next person will be moved tomorrow to the central region to Cape Coast. Okay. Yes, that, for that to be the fifth person in critical condition. Mm. Yeah. Well, the concern also is about this uh, particular chemical involved, uh, the ammonium nitrate, uh, for instance. Looking at the drone shots and the impact, it appears it was very, very uh, serious, devastating, uh, to say the least, I would say. But is there anything we're doing also to ensure that this chemical is not in the system as we speak? Yes, um, I think the security agencies, especially the police and even the military, they have experts who deal in uh, CBRN, which is chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear mm -hmm. substances. Mm -hmm. And it is true that they have the protocols of handling, the protocols of transport transporting it and all that. And I'm sure that's what the investigation will be looking at. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure the teams, those teams that I expect will do some tests. I'm sure by all means they will do some tests of uh, the substance. Okay. Whether there's still some of those the substances in the atmosphere. Or so. If it hadn't been a blast, or it has just been maybe a leakage and mm. it has diffused into the atmosphere, maybe we might be, can be more telling a different story now. Mm. Uh -huh. So I'm sure the experts in the investigations, all these experts will come in mm. to actually ascertain exactly what happened, what is the level of the substance or the gas in the atmosphere, in the environment, they will do all that. Okay. Yes. It's rather unfortunate that um, Director General of Public Affairs uh, for the police, uh, ACP Kwesi Furi, uh, is not with us now. We are unable to tell why, uh, but he had agreed uh, to be on the show tonight because there's a lot emerging that the police is also leading that we are hoping to get some clarity on, at least in the last few minutes, for instance, the motor rider, that said motor rider who was supposed to have crashed into this particular vehicle has been speaking to my colleague Maxwell Agbaba, and amongst others, he says he wasn't at the scene when the blast occurred. He says he was actually at the hospital because he was hit in the rear earlier before they even heard about that uh, particular blast. He was in the hospital when he heard the blast amongst others. That story is yet to be, uh, you know, refuted also by the police, but he's been interacting with him on it. Uh, we'll get is something that will be delving deeper into it, whether there was actually a police escort with this uh, vehicle. But what we are also getting is that when the incident occurred, we saw police, we've seen videos yeah. of police officers trying to drive people away uh, from the scene, but uh, the residents were just uh, kept on moving. We've seen videos also of um, subsequent blasts, and we don't know what has happened to some of these people. Uh, but let's talk about, as a people, when there's an accident, for instance, there's a, an occurrence, we tend to want to drive towards or move towards the scene rather than take precaution. Um, how is it that we are not educating people enough when it comes to uh, handling such situations? Well, um, it goes two ways. Um, when there, there is an incident, sometimes the very first responders are the community people mm. who live there because they may be the people who just witnessed the incident and may want to provide some help. But when it comes to issues that deals with chemicals, it is a very tricky thing. Um, sometimes to accidents, it is also very tricky. An accident occurs, you, you don't know what might happen next. You go near and, I mean, it is petrol, it is diesel, it's and combustible materials, and the whole thing goes up in flames. You might be affected if you go so well. Uh, the caution is always that if something happens, the authorities are there. We have 
I mean, the police, we have NADMO, we have them everywhere in this mm. country as we speak. Okay. If you are able to draw an expert's attention to it, it is better than the people themselves trying to go there. In this particular case, I hear even the driver, when he got off the track and was running off, was warning the people that they should get away. But well, curious as they are, they wanted to see what was happening. Mm. And unfortunately, okay. this happened. So that attitude of trying to always be, uh, in your introduction, you said a citizen journalist mm -hmm. or something. To some extent, it's, it's, it's dangerous. It's quite dangerous mm. because you never know what you might be, I mean, getting yourself into. And I'm very sure quite a number of the people who got injured are people who were going near yeah. the, 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 the scene. explosion scene. Okay, let's hear from uh, that motor rider. Uh, my colleague Masola Baba has been interacting with him on his account of what exactly happened. Chief, what's, what's your name? Within the Philip Mensa. Philip Mensa. Okay, great. Can you tell us exactly what happened? And the minimum is here. Nobody will ride the motor. Okay, tell us. Let me see. It's Reso. Okay. And then Babu Gosu. Now, now, Philip. It's Reso. Eh, Babu Gosu. Okay. But it's Reso. No one is here. Yeah. And then I mean Babu Gosu. It's me. Bedru. I can't even understand which one. And then. Stand with car. Okay. But it's like say oven type, no. Yeah. And but it's plastic one. Hmm. And it's me. Me didn't achieve free. It's Reso. Just in Sahara, Eba. Yeah. It's a higher. Na plagi yansu jina lai mufanza lai we yusu si ewa to ono tisi eh ono tisi stanviki neni m to ono tisi neni mno na stanviki nbo break to ono bo break na misumi bo break ya meti yansi meti chuo pain to adekrone bo yinfiri moto nusu na yifiri moto nusu to mi slide we kuta ono tisi to mi slide ino na moto nusu slide Okay, it's a car and a bob. Can I cry? Can I bomb in me? Because I'm a Okay, okay. But sometimes that car and a cry is close to me. I'm a man. Where are you? I'm a man. Where are you? I'm a man. Okay. I'm a man. Because I'm a man. Okay. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. Okay. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. Yeah. And I'm a man. 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 i am yeah. And a taxi being so on a pack your bush and no honor. Yeah. To a mono rush me, I'm cast of can I bought Philip and to a mono bell rush me, they mean to taxi mo call as a da hospital. Okay. And to as a da hospital or no, no nest for no buy some baby treating. They made the old bear thirty minutes or more so modin do baby treating. And yet he said, be a blasted. Okay. It's a dear blasted and a nest for any journey. To me, crammy free bed and so I miss me journey. Because no more see a JB. Yeah. To be a journey, to name some journey. To change no more case, any journey, journey is mahasi. Journey is mahasi. No more mama saying go to bed and so. To within be fifteen minutes time, no one will say more day. Or more more play play, be play. Eba hospital. Okay. To to me now, me cry me di can hold hospital. Or more treat me. Okay. Ha, or more treat me because now I say go for condition here high. A change me me day no. To or more change me me day no. No more share. Or to or more share or more. Later on, I'm going to be able to share my story. Okay. Okay. And she said, oh, I didn't explode the crown. I didn't have a crown. I didn't have a crown. If we had a crown, I didn't have a crown. Yeah, crown. I didn't have a crown. Wow. I didn't have a crown. I didn't have a crown. Okay. And I was able to consult the doctor and the nurse. I didn't have a crown. I didn't have a crown. Okay. And she said, the crown is explosive. Where is the crown? Yeah, I did. Wow. In the chest, I didn't know we are now. Motor no car from when I rush you the cause, but I'm motor no idea that from one. Yes, sir. Okay. Nature, it's a crown. Okay. Nature, it's a crown. It's a little crown. Explosive car, no, Messiah. And no, no, me name time I can't be Bessia, me motor, because me no, me talk from nine, D in B and a base in the free buyer, Madame Betro taxing, taxing in the McCoy. Okay. But what's a massive? Okay. Uh huh. The car from the ball, any explosive car? I'm not sure, baby. Car is not a bomb, I'm not sure. Okay. Wow. You see, I see my eyes. Ah, you have to see my public view. You see, I like to have my motorbike. Although, so now, we have to have my motorbike. I feel it bad, pa. If you say, I'm not sure. And I'm not sure. 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 I'm not
and snow, a be as no mamma crana ye in a in Pabaco. And he said, A me bushing any be cloud woman. Me bushing any woman, me bushing any more. Ye in a yard, dear Bacone, a me clay. Because me dear, oh, Macuma Macasa. Say, because in some now I call Bontin, O be a candidate, O be say, me do quisia, carcassiano, O be class my ship, be see me do la carcassiana say, but in Uncle Ponquan, who knew. That's all. So that's the motorbike rider there telling us his account of what transpired that day. Um, he refutes the claim that he rode into the truck that was carrying the explosives that day that led uh, to the explosion that has killed, we are told now, 14 persons left, several others displaced and a lot more uh, injured uh, as we speak. So you've been hearing him uh, tell his, his account of what transpired that day. He, was, he says he was actually in the hospital uh, when the explosion occurred. He was not at the scene uh, because it's interesting that he's still alive because if he was actually, if he actually rode under uh, the truck, there was no mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. would survived. have survived and uh, to tell the story uh, as we speak. So that's the situation. We're also yet to hear from the truck driver yeah. who we're told also survived. So it still raises the question about whether there was a police escort uh, in front of the truck. I'm seeing a letter. We're picking up the security desk. I just picked a letter. Later on, uh, we would let everyone see uh, the protocols that we are told the company went through to get police escort. But as to whether they actually got the police escort is also something else that we are probing into and the security desk here are joining. So we're looking into that. And as and when uh, we get more, we'll bring it to you. Unfortunately, uh, Director of Public Affairs, uh, Chrissy Fouri, is not here. Uh, with us tonight and we're hoping that he'll be here to give us some answers and some of these developments that are coming up uh, on this particular incident. We know they are leading investigations into it. The police set trip we got also tells us that there was a police escort and that together with a truck driver, they moved into the town to evacuate some students that were uh, in school at the time when we are told that some resident ignored their warning uh, to move away uh, from the scene. But these are developing issues and subjects of investigation. But the concern earlier, we were talking about the fact that how people do not take it seriously when incidents of such nature occur. Uh, Nagmo, uh, you should be interested also uh, in this particular investigation. We tend to investigate these incidents yes. and mostly nothing comes out of it. Well, um, no. What happens is that when these investigative uh, reports are out, institutions that um, need parts of it to improve or uh, reassess their way or try to d look at it and improve their mm -hmm. SOP, standard operation procedures, so that, I mean, they respond better when an incident of such nature occurs, unfortunately, again. So every institution is interested in the investigation and what will come up. And I'm sure all these bits and pieces that you are gathering, all this uh, information will go to the committee, and I'm sure the committee will unravel exactly what happened and whether the company that was doing the transportation of the explosive actually followed the, the protocols, mm -hmm. and that will, I'm sure that will be established. And as I said, as an organization, for us and uh, the, the municipal chief executive, Dr. Isaac uh, Dasmanin, said it clearly that for us as an organization, our concern is dealing with the humanitarian uh, crisis or issues that have come out of mm -hmm. this. And the MC, per our structure, he is the chairman of our disaster management committee that I, I always say that at the district level, we have that standard committee that responds to disasters. Before anything occurs, their duty is to have a disaster management plan yeah. and look at how they can educate people, warn people about the possible hazards in the community or in the locality they, they have and the do's and don't. And I think they are doing quite well 
as a municipality in getting all the agencies together because the director of uh, district director of health service district director of education the uh, agri ministry rep the security agencies, fire service, they are all members of this committee. And as and when they want to um, uh, bring somebody in, they do. Especially okay. maybe the assemblyman of the area that the thing happened. Or maybe an expert who has knowledge on CBRN, mm. be part of the committee. Because he mentioned they will be having uh, a meeting very soon. Yeah. And out of that will come, they will set up a committee which will actually manage this whole process until such a time that the people can go about their daily um, activities freely. Mm. Because uh, he said earlier that most of them are farmers. Yeah. Their farms are not too far away from mm. the community. So even where they are going to start uh, settling them from tomorrow, they can start going back to the their farm. farms gradually as uh, government takes steps to work on the reconstruction. Mm. Of but what is the expectation? Uh, we don't know uh, in terms of the investigations, uh, how far we're expecting it to travel, how soon we're supposed to get at least the preliminary uh, findings in terms of uh, what has happened and where we are with it and going forward. Do we have any timelines? Do you, do you happen details, to know? No, I don't okay. happen to know. I think the details will come from either mm. the, um, the Ministry of Lands and, and Natural Resources. Or all the, the police. The police also carrying out their, their investigations, investigations as well. Okay, well, uh, there was a, a lady who was supposed to get married uh, yesterday, I'm told, yeah. in one of the churches uh, that collapsed. My colleague, Maxwell Agnubah, uh, will go back to him. He caught up with him. But before we do that, we'll take a quick break here on the probe. Thankfully, uh, we'll have a little time in terms of extension so we can cover this uh, comprehensively. It will actually continue also on all our platforms uh, and also on myjoinonline.com. Let's take a quick break. We are right back. Thank you so much for staying with us here on the probe. My guest tonight is Saji Saji Amedonu. He's the Deputy Director General, NATMO. We're also expecting, uh, he was supposed to be on the show uh, today, the Director General, Police Public Affairs, for some reason. I hope he's safe, but he hasn't been able uh, to join us uh, today. Uh, we don't know why. We are unable to explain a thousand apologies for his absence here on the show tonight. But that's so unlike him, so we're hoping that there must be uh, some good reason for his absence tonight here on the probe. But senior member of our security desk, Maxo Agbagba, is live on the ground. We go back to him and he's interacting with a woman who was supposed to get married uh, yesterday in one of the churches that has collapsed as a result of the explosion. Uh, he'll be interacting uh, with her. Maxo, if you're ready, we're I'm eager to hear. Drive from where the incident um, happened, the explosion happened. Um, this building right behind me is serving as a shelter for the a little over 300 people who have been displaced. Um, it's past 9 p.m., but there's still a lot happening um, here. What you can see happening behind me is a queue. I don't, I don't know what, is, what they are sharing, but it looks like a long queue, um, people waiting to get what the distribution, um, what they are distributing there. But we know that 14 people have so far died. Um, another person who was affected by this um, is this woman I'm about to speak to. Her name is Benedicta Morgan. Today was supposed to be her wedding day. But guess what? The church where the wedding was supposed to take place completely destroyed. Roofing sheets completely destroyed, musical instruments all destroyed. Her wedding has been her wedding was actually called off because of the explosion. Now she lives with her um, husband to be in the same community and now the two of them are homeless. Sad twist of fate there. Benedicta, you're welcome to join us. Kasemi, now can I met, now can say, with your wedding, Thanksgiving, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, some can see we at two. Kasemi, your preparation is going to not wear yourself for the wedding, as some will see. I mean, it's not serious. I feel like I have one. I have to be here, and I have to be here, and I have to be here, and I have to be here. 
Mm. Okay, she says she's lived with her man for the past six years, and this is the time that they were ready um, after putting resources together. This is the time that they were ready um, to get married. Saturday and Sunday today. That was when the disaster um, struck. Jim Pesimo wants a wedding, the Amuya preparations are. Catering near the well, what she's saying is that uh, all the items that they bought for the wedding completely destroyed um, by the uh, fire that gathered their homes after the explosion. She says um, the wedding gown that they bought also completely destroyed. In fact, everything they bought for the wedding destroyed. She's also been talking about how they paid for food, drinks, and other things that they were going to use for the wedding on Saturday and Sunday, but all of that destroyed now. She says their homes also um, destroyed and that is why she's part of the displaced persons um, living here now another sad thing about this NSA we sister one we sister we na we sister we obo awo ni ade ade no explosion is here no you see that the uh, that the for work uh huh catch your bottom no serious see a baby ada no see sad of us am why or the, or the hospital man is here. Takwa government hospital. Takwa government hospital. Old one. Old one. And I know who called him. I friend Grace Morgan. Hmm. Sad of us are more. Nidia Nidia Nibana said, Not in front side. Not in front, and I said, Okay. Now, we're in the best year. Hmm. So, you're done, you know, now we're in the blasting. That you never born in name. It's your name. Oh. Well, she says her sister, um, Grace Morgan, sells by the side of the road, um, very close to ground zero. She says at the time that the explosion happened, uh, she was by the side of the road in a shop selling. Um, she tried escaping, but no, she couldn't. And then she got affected. She says as it stands now, she cannot, she cannot walk. Um, she tells me that she's been hospitalized at the Takwa Government Hospital. She was there yesterday um, to see to see her. But I'm also not more a pine home, Anna. No more yet than a pine home. No more washing your mouth. Answer the exclusion is here. You say, what to be a best chiffon? What to be for? And Chebiana can also be do. And to motor no way, if she lay on a question, can I say? Anna. Okay. When a can, a better also. Explosives, <laughs> Okay. 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 The um, driver who was carrying the explosive actually tried saving the motorbike rider. Um, she says when the motorbike rider actually fell off the motorbike, um, by some way, by some, uh, by some way that I cannot really process at this point, the motorbike actually got under the vehicle, and that was what caused the um, the, the, the explosion. And she says, "Where the name of the Adeni?" What was it done? I said, When you need it. In your year, when it's in your year, when it's Canadian, in your shed, it's in our mom, when you want to. Yeah, yeah. Taffy in your baby's nana. Yeah, definitely. She's telling me that um, as it stands right now, they've indefinitely called off the wedding um, because of the many lives that have been lost from their community. 
And then um, also because all the resources that they invested now has gone down the drain. So really they've postponed the, um, the wedding indefinitely. Last question. So another gentleman, a lot of the people here have been talking about, uh, a lot of the community members who have visited have been talking about is Suarez. All the community members have been eulogizing him and saying a lot of good things about him. She's telling me that the Suarez that they have been talking about is a relative. No, Yako. Why? 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 Okay. But as I said, what's my strength? I wouldn't even insure Kasai. Why? Okay. Why? Okay. Thank you. Good night. Okay. So that's Benedicta Morgan. That's her story. Heartbreaking uh, story. But her story mirrors what many of the people here, um, what many of the people here experienced. Some of them lost their children, some of them lost their husbands, some of them lost their wives in that incident that happened um, at APNT. But this is the building that they are occupying now. Um, very soon they'll be going to bed, they'll be going to sleep. They just finished supper. In fact, these speakers that you can see here, I'm told, yeah, provided some kind of music for them. And um, some of them, when we got here, we're dancing to the music that was being played, some gospel music, comforting music. And I'm sure they, were, they found solace in some of the um, lyrics. And so you could see them dancing um, to, 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 to the songs that were being played here. Um, that tomorrow, the assembly will be moving them to a new location, a more spacious location. A place where a lot of other things, you know, will be provided for them, lavatory and all of that. Um, the first day when we came, there were no tents here, but now the Red Cross Society has provided additional, you know, tents. Um, we want to take you inside so you can see inside and see what it is like, how you're sleeping here, and why the new accommodation, the more spacious place, you know, space will be very important, you know. Um, for them. Usually when you come here during the day, you find the children jumping around, having fun. Many of them do not know the enormity of the disaster that struck their community. You find their parents sitting on benches, you know, with their hands supporting their chin, their hands cupped under their chin, thinking about where the nest, you know, where the nest roof over their heads is going to come from. Let's try and see if... Um, just okay so we're not getting inside a little too much we don't want to breach any privacy but this is what it looks like um in here maybe my camera technician can come a bit closer so we have an idea of what it looks like and how close the mattresses are the assembly says hopefully by tomorrow hopefully by tomorrow they'll provide a more spacious a more spacious accommodation you know for the people so this is this is this is what it looks like in here. Yeah. This is where they'll be spending the night. They've been here since Thursday. Hopefully when a new accommodation comes, a lot more relief, a lot more space for the affected persons. All the people you see here have heartbreaking stories. Some of them is double agony, double pain, double tragedy for them. Whilst they're feeling the pains of their wounds, they're also feeling the pain of the uh, of the loss of their beloved ones. Yeah. So this is what it looks like in here. I want to show you um, the other side. The assembly says a more spacious place will be made available for them tomorrow. And hopefully the reconstruction also that will be taking place. We are told by authorities that they will expedite action on that. So hopefully 
they can get to go back to their homes and where they came from. Earlier, someone told me that some of them are saying that they want to go back to the village. But the entire village, the entire community has been cut off now. It's impossible for them to go there. It's a lot of noise in here. I'm wondering how they'll be able to sleep, or they are able to sleep. A lot of children crying, some of them screaming. This is a sad reality. And this place is just for the women and children here. The men have been relocated to the Golden Hotel, where they have been kept. Here, at least, they have provided meals, breakfast, lunch, supper, sometimes desserts as well. This woman you can see there, Elliot told me about a story how she tripped. You can see it. she's still nursing her wounds. There are many people like her like that. I don't know what I don't know what the message is, I think. Okay. You wanna hear wanna hear what she said? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. 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 Would <laughs> Well, that is the message. Um, so the woman is telling them uh, to make sure that the babies are in diapers because there are many of them here and um, this place will be a mess if they don't know where their diapers so she's urging them to make sure their children are in diapers she says for those who do not have food for their children they should come outside and get some food for their children so many of them are moving outside hopefully tomorrow the relocation will happen when it happens We'll be more comfortable. So, Amazon, this is what it looks like. Um, this is what it is like here at the St. Michael's Catholic Church. This building, which is serving as a shelter um, for the displaced persons. Over to you in the studio, Amazon. That's my colleague Maxwell Agbaba reporting from the St. Michael's Catholic Church. There, uh, at, uh, near the Apieti, where this incident occurred, is between Bogoso and Bordier. And that's the, the sad state of it. Thankfully, we have a number of survivors. 
and uh, that's your state as we speak. We are told they are well taken care of and Maxwell has been interacting with uh, that woman who was supposed to get married but unfortunately uh, can't do that uh, just yet. And uh, Mr. Saji Saji Abadonu is with me in the studios. So we'll wrap up um, at this point. He's the Deputy Director General, Natmo. Earlier, painted a picture to us that uh, they've been able uh, to you know, bring relief uh, to some of these persons there and it appears that we're seeing um, some yes, semblance yes. of it. And the relief efforts will, will continue. Mm -hmm. And uh, as um, I said earlier on, we are moving everybody to the new site. They are working this night, even as we speak, they are still there working to make sure they get them uh, decent places, washrooms and all that. Uh, some tents donations have come in. And where they are going was supposed to be a place that one of the mining companies was building for resettlement of uh, a group of people. So okay. they are moving them there temporarily, and okay. that's why they have the tents to support. Is it close to the area? Where exactly mm, is yes, that? Yes, close to uh, 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 the Apiati, Apiati. Okay. area. Okay. But where they are now is actually at Bogoso. Okay. Uh -huh. The St. Okay. Michael's Church is actually at Bogoso. Bogoso. So they okay. move them from the place to Bogoso. It's about, I hear that Apiati itself is about 10 minutes drive. From, from there to Bogos, so it's just about 10 minutes drive. Okay. Uh -huh. So when that happens, when the movement happens, then the other issues of children going to school mm -hmm. will also have to come in. And uh, the MC assures that they are making frantic efforts to make sure that even at the new place they will be going, some schooling can start. Because actually, a PAT had only a primary school. Okay. They don't have a... JHS. So it's a primary school, and that school has been affected. Here, the structure was not raised down, but the roofing of the structure is completely it's gone. gone. Okay. Uh -huh. So they will be making some temporary arrangements for the kids to start going to when they move to the new, the new place. And so how about the road? The road. What I know immediately, what has happened is that they have been able to uh, make some parts of the place will travel so mm. that, I mean, travelers from other places who use that road can use and get back on the main road. But I hear they are working seriously on making sure the crater that crater, was, okay. uh, was, is, is covered. And as part of the team at the incident command were people from even the highway too, who are also t uh, looking at the the aspect of making sure the road is completely motorable again. Mm. So hopefully we are sure that uh, very soon life will return or right, life, uh, things will be, come back to normal. Mm. For, and this uh, will be at the tent, but what happens to the ground itself, um, where the incident occurred, the APT itself? Is there a plan for it? I know that uh, you finished rescue, you're yes, looking at, exactly. but what happens to the town exactly. itself? So uh, as, as we, 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 we settle them temporarily, mm -hmm. we'll be looking at the medium to long term. And you know, government has already uh, assured uh, the people through the vice president that they will do everything possible to make sure that they, they have their lives back. Okay. And I'm sure all other things will follow if temporarily they are okay and they can go about their daily activities, going to the farm and all that normally. We are sure that, I mean, the district assembly with all the heads of agency are doing all they can. I mean, uh, we must commend them that in this particular situation they have acted quite swiftly and uh, tried as much as possible to bring some relief to all the people affected, especially the displaced people. Mm. Well, and um, the investigations, uh, which is also underway, hopefully, whoever is found negligent or whether it's somebody's or institution's negligence that led to the situation yes, we're yes. told that will definitely be punished. We are hoping that this will not be another uh, disaster that we we'll just have an investigation and uh, nothing really happens. We will not even see the report, let alone hear that anybody has been punished. Well, we are, we are quite certain that um, the uh, investigative report that will come out, what is even more important is the actions that will follow after the report is out. Apart from those who are culpable, those who maybe have been negligent or done something that has led to uh, this unfortunate incident, the actions that will follow for institutions, for even the assembly, for the mining companies and all that, 
that will make all of us, I mean, do things in such a way that we don't have a reoccurrence of this unfortunate incident is what is important if the report comes out. Or when the report comes out, yes. Okay. The well, things that will follow is quite, quite important for mm, all of us. Well, so. but one thing that ran through at least most of the questions that I got earlier uh, before we started the show is um, the, the, the concern that NATMO, as we have it, it's not adequately prepared when it comes to dealing with situations that confront you. Maybe you should just I give have, that assurance to, to, to the people. I of course, you can never be prepared over, for a disaster, over, but over it's how you respond to it is a concern. It, for it is maybe how you also look at the organization or you look at disaster response in its entirety. I have always said, any time I have the opportunity to say that disaster management is a re collective responsibility. That is why even our operations are hinged on the district assembly. You have the district chief executive who is the chairman of our disaster management committee at every district in this country. The district chief executive has all the agencies under him. He's able to commandeer any resource at the district level to attend to any situation. So when there is, like this incident, as soon as it happened, you saw all the agencies were at play. And there was some coordination. Nadmo was seriously involved in this. And you, 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 you saw that items were lifted. We airlifted those items actually to them. Those okay. items were actually airlifted. Because we needed to get to them that evening. So by that evening, they were able to get some relief. Because that was when they were moving the people to St. Michael. Mm -hmm. And there... They will need mattresses, mm -hmm. they will need mosquito coil, they will need mosquito nets, they, may, they will need food items and all that. So we're able to manage and do such mm -hmm. a thing. Yes, I, I don't see any agency in this country which is self-sufficient. So I will also not, I mean, sit here and say that uh, NADMO, we, 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 I don't know how to put it, but we are doing our best mm -hmm. in the current circumstances that we find ourselves. Okay. We're grateful uh, for your time uh, tonight. Thanks so much for spending uh, your Sunday evening with me. Uh, that's uh, Saji, Saji Amadon, who is the Deputy Director General, Natmo, live from Akokumlimli Studios here. Also live from Bogoso is my colleague, Maxo Agbagba, a senior member of the security desk here, uh, joining, is joining us uh, for tonight's edition of the probe. Once again, a million apologies uh, for uh, the Pub Director General of Public Affairs uh, for the police, ACP Kusi Bufuri's uh, inability uh, to join us tonight. Uh, I'm not able to explain why, but as and when I get some explanation, I'll give it to you. I am MFA Pau. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. Another edition of The Probe comes your way at uh, same time here on the Joy News channel. On behalf of the entire team, we say many thanks for your company. Have a good evening.